Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Daniel Javier. I am the director of quality and CSR at WorkUp, and uh, I'm honored to welcome you on behalf of the World Confederation of Businesses to this uh, webinar in uh, excellence, business excellence in hospitality and uh, tourism, a sector that has been very pretty affected by the pandemic, but now we have speakers that will share with us, with us their experience their, uh, and their receipt for the uh, resilience and success. But let's start introducing our friend, Jesus Moran, CEO and founder of Worko. Welcome, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. Uh, welcome also to Miss Sabrina, Nicolás, uh, Mario, Eva. Welcome to all of our World Club members pre uh, present today also. Uh, lastly, uh, we, will come, we welcome the business people here to learn more about our Bizdom platform as well. We, they are connected over there. So for over 18 years, World Confederation of Businesses or World Cup uh, has been better known for motivating and stimulating companies and institutions with its business section recognition, which is the Biz Awards. So who better than our best winners to tell us about business excellence? Our speakers will talk about business excellence in hospitality and tourism sector. And you will also understand, of course, about the Biz Awards. This is our best webinar, second best webinar of the year. And we are doing it from our virtual convention center held in our best on platform. In this convention center, you can interact with other participants, network with them, exchange virtual business cards, visit booths, of workout products and visit the, the best winner zone of, of course, the hospitality and tourist sector. So all of the winners that are from that sector, the, all of the best winners will be there in, the, in all our uh, more than 18 years history. So if you're watching also from our Facebook page, LinkedIn or YouTube, we invite you to access our uh, www.bizwebinar.com. With, webinar this platform, BizDome, is a development of our Biz Events brand and it's hand of our old companies is offered for all, uh, to all companies and institutions that organize virtual and hybrid events. So if your company or institution is planning to have a virtual hybrid event coming, uh, or if you want to learn more about the benefits of organizing a kind of this event, give us a call and access our, biz, uh, our website, bizevents.com. Thank you uh, to our incredible team that makes this event possible. Before you, um, you present the first speaker, Daniel, Let's invite our guests to watch our latest The Biz Hybrid Award held in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. So um, thank you. Thank you, guys. So um, this is a, you know, a, a very short reel uh, about what was our event. And of course, uh, this event was organized in the, in the best hotel in Toronto, the Ritz Carton. And uh, we have the, the pleasure and honor of having Nicolas and uh, Miss Sabrina there in Toronto. We, we just couple of weeks see us see each other of course also with Daniel, Nicolas, Kelly and other directors as well. So we enjoy the opportunity of uh, reuniting with, with you guys and uh, agreeing the, the hybrid experience for the participants and their ex stakeholders for the platform as well. You know, um, you know we have first in, just in terms of activities we will have the uh, reception, the, um, the registration, the welcome reception. We will have, we'll have the workshop presented by Daniel. This time was the first time 
he, he uh, was leading the uh, workshop and he did an awesome, awesome job. Thank you. Uh, also work there, Daniel. Um, <laughs> right. And, um, and of course, we have in the, in, the, in the evening, we have the award ceremony with the red carpet and everything there, uh, which was great. And uh, always we are honored to, to produce uh, such a, a successful event as we had to do in Toronto. So the, uh, for, for this year, we have our uh, last event, which is the Biz Signature in November, uh, which is in Houston here. And uh, next year, we have a program uh, already, program already in Kazakhstan and Lisbon for next year. So in case any company is interested in applying for the evaluation process and becoming a Biz winner, you can access to the bizawards.com uh, website. <clears throat> this, of course, uh, you're watching, you know, the final, the, the final part of the video, which of course also was a hybrid event. So you know, all the participants uh, that were in the uh, on-site event, and of course the ones that were virtually could enjoy and engage uh, between each other as well. And also uh, visit the booths with, that were there and the, all, the, uh, all the information that all the content was in the, uh, in the BizDoc platform. All right, guys. So thank you, Daniel. I think Daniel, you know, we're ready to start our conference. Uh, thank you again to the speakers uh, that give us their time. So I will leave you and uh, see you later. Thank you. Thanks, Jesus, for your welcoming words. And well, let's start presenting our uh, our first speaker, uh, Nikos Chalkiadakis. He was uh, uh, he participated in the in the event in Toronto, uh, as Jesus was telling us. He was born in uh, Heraklion, Crete, and he was graduated from Korai High School and continued his studies in a tourism school in Munich, uh, Germany. He speaks five languages and knows the tourism sector very well. Since 2013, he has been the president of the Heraklion Hotel Association with the goals of uniting and registering more members in the union, extending the tourist uh, season and uniting the primary sector with hotel businesses. He's a member of the board of directors of the hotel chamber, representing Crete and specifically the, the Five Stars Hotels. Uh, he's the CEO, the CEO of uh, Theophilus Chalkiadakis Corporation, which has been active in the hospitality industry since 1980. Um, the strong investment activity um, of the family business contributes significantly to the further increase in employment in the uh, in the region. The choice of local suppliers and producers is a known competitive advantage of the business, uh, contributing more to the economic strengthening of the local community. The mission of the company and the main philosophy of the management is to provide high quality services, always in accordance with the policies that refer to the environment, the local community, human rights, and national heritage. It's worth nothing that, nothing that in the last eight years, the company has won a series of local and evil global awards. Welcome, Nicolaus. It's a pleasure to have you with us. So fine, we'll spin round and round. The sun will go rise and shine, we'll never slow down. We gotta go wine and dine all over the town. I'll ring you up round about six o'clock. Meet at the village dock at quarter to eight. So sturdy and solid Got pounds in my pocket And I don't want to wait We gonna go wine and dine All over the town With red fish and rum so fine We'll spin round and round The sun will go rise and shine We'll never slow down We gonna go wine and dine all over the town Some ginger punch Darling, you try it first Satisfy all your thirst Make you feel right I've got a hunch Won't order only one The evening has just
just begun And we have a night We're gonna go wild and dine All over the town With red fish and rum so fine We'll spin round and round The sun will rise and shine We'll never slow down We're gonna go wild and dine All over the town Welcome, Nicolas Chalkiadaki, CEO and Managing Director of Cactus Hotels. Thanks for sharing with us your expertise. Thanks for the invitation and the honor to participate in today's webinar. Today, we will essentially present the reasons why our hotels are award awarded in biz awards. Today's webinar is a great opportunity to exchange ideas for adoption. Business excellence, especially when it's, it is acquired by a company employing 400 employers, it's a, a result of teamwork, the achievement of team performance through a series of process. For this reason, I would like to express my estimation and thank my team, my employers for all this achievement. Also, I never stop thanking my father, who with hard work and hardships 42 years ago, laid the foundation of the hotels. A hardworking man who had the know-how to build a healthy business and contribute to a local community. It fills me with a particular joy that the business continues to be a family business and remains under the management of Halkadaki's family. Congratulations to both today's participating companies and good luck in our seminar. Thank you. Thanks to you, Nicolaos. Eva will continue now. Yes, of course. I want to introduce Eva. She is uh, also joining us. Thanks, Eva, for joining us. She is Head of Communication and Corporate Social Responsibility and at, at Cactus Hotels. She was graduated at the Athens University of Economic and Businesses with postgraduate studies in economics. Eight years of experience in the hotel industry and in sustainable development management. And at Cactus Hotels, her main responsibility is the continuous communication with the stakeholders of the business, the formulation of the company's market strategy, and the strengthening of the hotel's social identity. Welcome, Eva. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Hello from Greece. I would like to thank the team of World Cup and Biz Awards for uh, the chance given to us to participate in uh, the awards. And uh, this, uh, your mission to boost and also promote uh, business achievement and strokes are willing to work harder. So thank you for this. Also, it's very important to say that Mr. Halkadakis, apart from CEO and uh, Managing Director from Cactus Hotels, is also, as you said before, the President of uh, the Hotel Union of uh, uh, Crete. So he's also a second, a double role, the role of mentoring for other companies. So participated and eventually being awarded in visa goals, it's so important for us and even other companies. Uh, I'm going to start my presentation uh, by presenting who we are. And then I'm going to focus in the three main sectors that we have uh, worked hard in sustainable terms. And I think that essentially these sectors are the main reasons 
for achieving the Business Excellence Award in tourism sector. We are not, of course, the best practice. Our hotel operations are not the best practice, but for sure we can say that we're a good practice to be adopted uh, by other companies in the hotel sector. Uh, can I start, Mr. Daniel, my presentation? Of course. Okay. So, uh, Cactus Hotels, an annual turnover about uh, 10 million euros, uh, employees about 400, and rooms approximately 700 rooms. The 97% of our revenues comes from the tour operators, and just the 3% of our revenues come from the OTAS, like booking Expedia. So you can see and realize the strong relationships that we build with our tour operation and our travel agencies. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, the company Theophilos Halkadakis was founded in uh, 1980 from the late Theophilos Halkadakis, the father of Mr. Nikos Halkadakis. The investments of all these years are many, uh, of uh, new modern uh, hotel units, and also the renovations and the creation of uh, additional infrastructure continue. The strong investment activity of the family business uh, contributes to the further increase of employments. And also uh, the selection of local suppliers and producers is a well-known competitive advantage of uh, the company. And this is contributes to the financial support of the local community. You can see throughout and during my presentation some photos of the whole properties. There are five hotels, so you can see some of them and enjoy them. The main goals of the company are to maximize the quality of our services, to minimize the environmental impact, and to optimize our uh, business processes, which is uh, the main uh, um, um, aspect is uh, the cooperation with uh, our stakeholders. Uh, in fact, we're a family of five hotels, different categories, four and five star category hotels. Um, ideal for families, partners or friends, depends from the hotel that everyone um, is going to choose. Our uh, friendly staff and hospitality and the professionalism and the long-term partnerships are competitive advantages of the business. The core of our enterprise is a, a concept of sustainable philosophy. Uh, we believe that the planet does not belong to us, so we must uh, conserve our destination to be sustainable for the next generations. The business recognizes the competitive advantage stemming uh, from the sustainable practices and balances the success between profit, preservation of the environment and the well-being of the society. Which is our mission and vision? We have um, set up a series of policies. The content of our policies, uh, uh, health and safety, human rights, the protection of child uh, from all kinds of abuse, uh, environmental element, our workforce, uh, and all these policies, uh, we care to communicate them on a regular basis with our staff, our visitors, and also our main priority is to align our priorities with our stakeholders to minimize the environmental impact and optimize our business processes. The biggest percent of our guest tourism belongs to Germany. It's about uh, 85%. The next position belongs to the Netherlands and Poland. Cactus hotels operate in terms of sustainable practices. And this is something that uh, it is proven via our certificates and our awards, international, worldwide, and national uh, and certificates and awards from uh, uh, institutions. Uh, business excellent, uh, when it um, um, is from a company, uh, is acquired to a company of uh, 500 employees, uh, is a result of teamwork, of team spirit and team performance. A uh, business distinction is not a prerogative of large companies, but it is a challenge for all, for all uh, small and medium-sized companies as is Cactus Hotels. And uh, many times the uh, obstacles uh, that we have to face are more even uh, now than in uh, large companies. 
Some of my uh, main uh, awards are uh, coming from TUI as TUI Invent Champion, TUI Top Quality, Travel Life, which comes also from TUI, uh, Booking Expedia, TripAdvisor Holiday Check Awards, and some of our main certificates come from TUI also, Travel Life Gold, ISO and HASP uh, from TUI, from TIF of Stellas, Greek Breakfast, Drinking with the Local, which are of uh, some certification um, with which we promote the local element, the local cuisine, uh, COVID seal for our operation during COVID and other certificates. Uh, just a few things, I'm not, I'm not going to speak analytically for them. Travel Life is, uh, uh, we are awarded since uh, 2011 and we continue. It's a system which helps us to manage and improve the social and environmental impacts by complying with uh, sustainability criteria. Also, the ISO and HASP systems uh, provide us uh, with an effective framework uh, for the handling, the safe handling of food in the supply chain. Also, bring key group breakfast that we do local, as I said before, certificates that we help us to promote the local elements, the local cuisine, and everything we'll do for the local uh, society. Uh, you can continue with the next page. Thank you. We are so glad and so happy that we managed to operate and accommodate our guests during the period of COVID-19. There are unfortunately many of hotels in Greece that do not manage to open due to the whole crisis. So we, we are so happy for this. Uh, please continue. Cactus Hotels changed the way of their operation. We immediately followed all the instructions regarding the disinfection and hygiene of our facilities and we obtained the health fair certification. Our group complied an action plan in order to effectively prevent and handle suspicious coronavirus cases if they occur and limit the transmission of the virus to the staff and guests. We created a special COVID-19 response unit which includes a doctor specialized it also supervises the safety and non-obstacle operation of our hotel while giving instructions and guiding the staff if necessary, always in accordance with the instructions of the authorities. Uh, in order to achieve the highest cleanliness and hygiene standard, we collaborated with certified companies that we can ensure the hotel's proper sanitation, the certification of the methods we follow, as well as the matching training of our staff. And we continue, we do not remain there. Uh, please continue. We are certifying finally with COVID seed certification because we do in practice a simulation and preparedness exercise for suspicious COVID-19 case management. The purpose of the exercise was the evaluation by health scientists, the effectiveness of the procedure and the vigilance of the action team to respond and faithfully follow the plan that has been drawn up to deal with an emergency COVID-19 case. Yes, the result was absolute success. That's why we operate and we finally come to a successful end during this uh, full of Christ seasons. You can continue. Our approach to CSR. CSR policy of Cactus Hotels derives from our business mission, which is mainly related to the minimization, as I said before, to environmental impacts, the maximization of safety and quality of services. Our uh, main uh, strategy is focused on uh, four fields. It's the workplace, it's our natural environment, it's uh, the, you can continue. It's our stakeholders and, and also the natural environment. Please continue. Who are our main stakeholders and their engagement and sustainability issues? Our employees, our suppliers, our guests, and our society. We provide to our employees safe workplace trainings, additional benefits, equal opportunities. To our employees, communication, good uh, cooperation, payments based on agreements. To our guests, infos, environmental cautions, continuous information and good quality service, and to our society via donations, sponsors, um, important social contribution, and um, employees and suppliers, you will see the percentage uh, in our next uh, pages from the local community. 
Our available workforce. Continue, please. You can continue also. Thank you so much. Here are some charts. You can see that 90% of our employees come from the local community and 55% are female employees. So you can see the gender equity. And also from the chart above, you can see the age distribution. Our trainings for our staff is uh, focused on health and safety, environmental issues, job training, and also social content issues. You can continue. According to local society, Theophilus Hulkadaks SA recognizes that the business should not be judged only on the basis of the quality of its services and its financial results, but also on its contribution to society as a whole. So in an annual basis, we organize a donation and sponsor uh, more, uh, most to our uh, local uh, institutions, like hospitals, primary schools, Athletic teams, please continue. The social responsibility is structured through a set of activities and actions, series of events to promote the local element, using local products and, ludic lo and choosing sorry, local suppliers, encouraging customers to buy products and services from local suppliers, provide infos, brochures from local businesses, provision of local transport information, encourage staff to participate in hotel activities related to environmental issues or other voluntary actions like blood donation that we organize on an uh, annual basis. Organization of activities related to the formation of the environmental consciousness, like tree planting and beach cleanings. Our main uh, social actions, uh, I'm not going to speak um, analytic uh, for them. Uh, just uh, what I said before, they are organized on an annual basis and it has to do with uh, a sponsor donation. Uh, and to cover important needs of people, vulnerable teams. Uh, and also, let's uh, mention some of them, offer food items, cover important needs at the regional uh, clinic of Mohos. Uh, we offer free room stays to staff doctors and nurses of the national health system as a minimum gratitude in their face for their contribution to the fight against the pandemic. Uh, donations, donations, many things. Many things. As our properties are most of them new or newly renovated, we use sustainable and innovative practice and methods. Um, based on this commitment, Scouts Hotel saying that implementing actions to save energy, to reduce water consumption, to manage wastewater properly, and to reduce and manage solid waste produced. The protection of bits and water quality, educating and raising awareness of hotel staff in order to actively participate in environmental actions, minimizing the use of chemicals with hazardous substances, uh, implementing a comprehensive recycling system. And also, uh, I don't uh, say that recycling is the best way. For us, we are happy that we have um, taken to philosophy and we have our philosophy, the circular um, uh, uh, economy. This is uh, the, the best practice. Uh, energy consumption. Uh, our goal is to reduce energy consumption without affecting the comfort conditions of our visitors, uh, with the ultimate goal of saving money and protecting the environment. We have replaced all energy saving labs with LED labs. All our conditioned units are energy labeled. There are signs everywhere for saving energy and also trainings for this reason. We have implemented a wash on demand policy. We check for electric appliances. We have new equipment. We also have magnetic cards in all rooms, ensuring that all electrical, except the refrigerator, are turned off where guests leave the room. Contact system on the balcony door so that when with the central balcony door are opened, then the internal condition is isolated. And also installation of BMS, building management system, a machinery and lighting supervision system for rational performance and operation. We can continue with water consumption. Some photos of um, equipment in the energy consumption. Also res, renewable energy sources for the lighting. Uh, water management consists of the most important issue and is used in hospitality in order to make the guests feel a great experience. 
facilities such as jacuzzi pools, water parks from the guest experience, so water supply must at least remain consistent. Water savings and the rational management of water resources, above all, the cultivation of a new culture with regard to water management is imperative. Installation of flow control devices in bath cubes, showers, and kitchen filters. Raining staff and proper water management, signs everywhere and trainings. Irrigation of the green using the drips method. Washing linen towels from certified third part. Installation of sanitary devices with a light amount of water consumption. Proper control and maintenance of the swimming pools. As far as waste management, proper waste management is an environmentally friendly matter, it's vital to the business. Recycling is a process that's applied to the hotel in all the departments and forms. Uh, we restrict the packaging materials by buying less packaged products. We have purchased press by compressing recyclables. We have a proper waste management recycling system for paper, glass, plastic toner, burnt oil, etc. We have proper management of quantity of food in proportion to the number of customers. Use of electronic system instead of paper for management purposes, for business purposes, and for the infos also for our uh, guests with mobile apps, info kiosk, uh, info channels. Application in restaurant and kits of the method first in first out, minimize disposable products, uh, limited the use of disposable plastic bags. Now that we speak, we have stopped the use of disposable plastic bags. Uh, and we use only reusable bags. Inform visitors about the environmental issues and the recycled products via all the electronic system I have already mentioned. At Cactus Hotels, we have stopped supplying the room, the rooms with plastic water bottles. Each room has glass bottles. Our guests can fill at easily accessible water stations throughout all our premises. In this way, we emphasize the importance of circular economy and their use. Also, at Cactus Hotels, all the hygiene and floor care products and papers are certified uh, with a, a sustainable forest management standard by FSC. We are looking forward to welcome you and see uh, from your own our operation in sustainable terms. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Of course, uh, I accept the invitation. <laughs> I invite you to stay with us until the end of the presentation because uh, we will have a question and answers uh, opportunity for our viewers and, and to chat with the other speakers in this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you very much. See you later then. And uh, let's continue with the next uh, presentation. Uh, it will be in, in Portuguese, so there will be a button, you can find a button in your, uh, in your <coughs> screen uh, that uh, allows us the uh, service, translation service, Portuguese and English. Uh, então, vamos apresentar a um, empresa... I'll give, now I'll give the floor to Mario. Let's present the company Brasileiros in Ushuaia. It's a Brazilian company based in Ushuaia, Argentina and Patagonia, especially uh, established to serve the Brazilian public. There is a great company. They, they started in 2013. Mario Barros and... Uh, and his wife spent two months uh, in the city and they created a, a page, a Facebook page with the name Brasileiros in Ushuaia and they had a great return uh, that later made them move to Ushuaia and uh, being pioneers in receiving Brazilian people at Ushuaia in Portuguese. Uh, the company opened in 2014. Five years later, in 2019, they received over 70,000 Brazilian tourists in Brazil. And now in 2022, uh, they have even better numbers. Uh, they're expecting to receive 100,000 Brazilian tourists in, in Ushuaia this year alone. Those are very impressive numbers, but the infrastructure in the city uh, is still... Uh, so in, in July 21st, they inaugurate the first Brazilian, the first winter Brazilian center, uh, holding the company in an even higher uh, standard. So it's a pleasure to receive Mario Barros here, the CEO of Brazilians, Brazilians in Ushuaia. Mario, the floor is yours. It's a, it's such a great privilege for us to be here. Sorry, the audio is breaking up. Então, para nós, realmente, 
é, é difícil até encontrar palavras porque a gente está emocionado. It's very difficult feliz. to find the words. We're really moved. É, é realmente uma trajetória difícil, né? especialmente a very devido à pandemia. Né? Um to here, especially due bastante. to the COVID-19 pandemic. Para nós foi bastante up. difícil também. Então estar aqui hoje para nós é um reconhecimento de um trabalho, de um esforço, de muita dedicação e de uma equipe muito forte. Our work, of, which is a fruit of a lot of dedication, sorry, the others breaking up. Então para nós realmente é, estar recebendo esse prêmio é, é uma alegria sem, sem tamanho. Uh, joy to Queremos this, primeiro agradecer uh, o World Cup. É, We'd like sem dúvida é um prêmio que representa muito para nós. Para nós é um privilégio, uma honra, pela segunda vez estar recebendo um prêmio de tão grande expressão. E sem dúvida, uma empresa que se preocupa com a qualidade From e escolher realmente profissionais really qualificados quality, que, são, que tem aqui todos aqui, empresários, têm uma trajetória, sem dúvida, bastante difícil e conquistaram seu espaço no, no ramo empresarial. Nós somos muito gratos também ao governo do Catar, que nos permite estar aqui é desfrutando também do seu país, da sua gente, da sua cultura. E para nós também é um privilégio estarmos aqui. Agradecemos nossa equipe de trabalho. Somos uma empresa de turismo. Sofremos muito com a pandemia. Então, para nós é um privilégio estarmos recomeçando agora, ainda com o recebimento desse prêmio. Então, somos uma empresa na cidade de Ushuaia, na Argentina, Patagônia, Argentina, e trabalhamos com brasileiros ali na cidade de Ushuaia. Então, somos gratos à nossa equipe de trabalho, nossos profissionais que trabalham duro, nossos familiares, nossos clientes, que, sem dúvida, nos permitem estarmos aqui. Só viemos eu e meu irmão, sócios e diretores, dois outros não puderam vir, mas, sem dúvida, o Peter e o Jefferson também estariam aqui representando a empresa. Muito obrigado a todos, somos muito gratos, é um privilégio estarmos aqui, e, sem dúvida, que cada um de nós possamos continuar trilhando esse trabalho com êxito, sempre com muita ética, muito profissionalismo, para que cada um de nós possamos alcançar o caminho do sucesso. Estamos muito felizes, queremos dizer thank you, muitas graças, obrigado e... Thank you, muitas graças. Chocran! Obrigado, Chocran. Para nós é um prazer enorme... Primeiro porque o reconhecimento ele é fruto de um trabalho muito grande que eles estão acknowledging o nosso trabalho e depois com a sequência minha e de alguns Sorry, the dois up. novos sócios que temos hoje, Jefferson e Peter. Então a alegria de, and, uh, the other two partners, do reconhecimento de um prêmio é sinal de que a gente está caminhando num trajeto correto, fazendo as coisas de forma correta right e certamente muito felizes por estar recebendo é, aqui, né, internacionalmente, um prêmio tão importante para a nossa empresa. Claro, é, na realidade, a gente sabe que todo um prêmio, ou para se atingir um objetivo, exige muito esforço. Que, uh, empenho, muita dedicação, muitas vezes, é um trabalho bastante árduo. Então, vale a pena, vale a pena buscar os objetivos, é um trabalho bastante árduo. Né? Então, vale, a pena, hard work. vale a pena buscar os objetivos, vale a pena realmente conquistá-los. Porque os sonhos podem ser reais, né? quando a gente sonha, às vezes quando a gente sai da, da nossa trajetória normal para buscar um sonho, a, a gente vê que tudo valeu a pena quando a gente realmente conquista. Estar aqui hoje uh, é uma evidência disso, uh, esse prêmio sem dúvida nos, nos ajuda bastante a, a manter o sonho, a manter o sonho e conquistar is, uh, ainda degraus ainda maiores do que esse. Really important for us. So let's welcome Mario Barros, CEO of uh, Brasileiros in Ushuaia. Let's get to know this company a little bit, which started in a, like in a casual way, but currently is the biggest uh, tour company of Brazilians outside of Brazil. Thank you, Mario, for being here. I thank you, Mr. Daniel Javier. It was such a great pleasure to uh, get to know you in person in Qatar. And also uh, Jesus Mora, the CEO of Worldcon. I thank him 
also uh, very much. So I'd like to thank everybody here for putting this great virtual webinar together and also thank everybody that were involved in, in the World Cup uh, prize uh, awarded to us in Qatar. It was such a great privilege uh, to share all these uh, incredible moments with you. It's very important for everybody to know that we are, in spite of being Brazilian, we are a company based outside of Brazil, which makes us receive, uh, we host Brazilians here in Ushuaia, in the Argentina and Patagonia, as you can see in the map here. It's the most southern city in Argentina. Here we can see Brazil on the upper part of the map. And uh, on the southern most part of the map, you can see Ushuaia, which is known worldwide as the southernmost city or the end of the world city. I mentioned this because in, in Chile, there is a a city that is a little further south, 2,000 people living there. This would be the uh, southernmost city in the world, but as it, it's not yet developed for tourism, uh, people don't know the city in Chile very well. So worldwide, we are among the companies that guides the largest number of Brazilians outside Brazil. Currently, we employ 68 people, and they are who make our company so special and uh, enables us to be eligible for the several awards we received in Brazil and abroad, uh, like the ones that we just mentioned in Qatar. Altogether, we received uh, six international awards, uh, both internationally and nationally. So let's talk about Ushai, uh, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, we're located on an island. Uh, called uh, Tierra del Fuego. With the impressive nature of beauty, like it was in the picture, surrounded, the, the city surrounded by the, mount, the Andes mountain range. Uh, there's the Beagle Channel, which you could say it's where the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans meet. Very close to the Beagle Channel. It's located the only national park in Argentina, where there are mountains, sea, lakes. So it's the only national park in Argentina where you find these three sites. And an island with uh, thousands of penguins. So you can walk uh, among them. There are several types of trekkings in the woods. So there's no doubt uh, the fauna and the flora of the city is very rich. And also uh, mountains that are like uh, millenary glaciers. In winter, there are several winter centers which, which go, which operates from June to September. As you can see here, uh, in the pictures, we saw sledges, uh, the Castor Hill, which is one of the biggest uh, winter centers in, in the city. There are several winter activities and tours that are made during daylight and nighttime. So this is known as the city of adventure. Is the, is the the city in Argentina with the biggest number of adventure activities, and maybe even in South America. We have a very rich cuisine. Uh, as you can see, the king crab on the next picture. It's the main dish from the, the, the local. There are fish like black hay, trout, salmon. The cuisine also offers an incredible barbecue. Uh, this is known as one of the best uh, quality meats uh, in South America. Uh, also, the local cuisine offer lots of uh, sweets, liquors, uh, and uh, craft breweries. It's a very rich city on the uh, gastronomy side. 
there are several restaurants offering international cuisine, Ushuaia. Uh, the, fifth, the fifth largest hard rock cafe in the world is located there. There are several gift shops uh, downtown. There are a lot of uh, duty-free shops because uh, Ushuaia is a tax-free region and much more. Next picture, we'll see a little bit about the sweets, about the, the liquor from the region. Uh, as you can see, it's an incredible uh, cuisine. So please come to Ushuaia and get to know the gastronomy, uh, the environment, the weather. So how's the weather in the city? A little bit before, people were asking me about the weather here in Ushuaia, and I just mentioned that uh, we were having like around two or three Celsius, and uh, after a little bit, uh, I looked out of the window and it was snowing. So the weather here is, if you can show the next picture, please. The weather in Ushuaia, uh, we have an average temperature of five degrees Celsius. People say here that the weather is either uh, really cold or cold, right? The frozen continent, Antarctica, is very close to Ushuaia, about 800 kilometers distant. So most research ships and uh, cruises uh, going to Antarctica leave from uh, Ushuaia port. So if you're planning a trip to Antarctica, please uh, stop here for uh, a couple of days because you're gonna, the, the ships will leave from this port. Look at the beautiful pictures you can see from Antarctica, the, the frozen continent. Uh, everybody dreams about going there, uh, about stepping on the frozen continent. So Ushuaia is the door to Antarctica, to Antarctica. So I invite you, everybody uh, attending this uh, webinar to visit our city a little bit. Now about our company. Me and my wife, We, we met. We we visited Ushuaia for the first time on a back backpacking trip in 2010. We liked it so much that uh, we returned in 2013 to spend our two month vacation there. I started a page on Facebook, and a lot of people started contacting me asking about Ushuaia. Uh, how to go here, what to do here. So we saw this as an opportunity to leave our comfort zone and uh, seek our dream and uh, our financial independence. At the time, I was a Thai salesman, if you can. I was a real estate broker for a year. I just had finished my course one year before. So after this two month vacation, we returned to Brazil and people said we were crazy. Uh, our relatives, uh, our friends said we were crazy. Uh, we took our car, our little dog, and uh, we covered the 10,000 kilometers to uh, finally arrive at Ushuaia. We had many challenges. The greatest challenge we had was that uh, first time that initially I uh, associated uh, to somebody that uh, betrayed me later. He had a tour agency in Ushuaia and uh, we started our partnership uh, in confidence. We didn't sign any papers and after a year and a half working together, after a year and a half, uh, working uh, and doing excellent work. This person stole the brand and uh, sent me off my way. I came to work one morning, as I do every day, and my partner and friend 
just told me you don't have to come here anymore. And uh, now I control the brand of Brasileiros in Shuaia. And uh, that was a very difficult moment for me. It took me almost a year to get our brand back. We never gave up. It's We can never gi uh, give up on our trees, not even a single day. And everybody in town, the vendors, the suppliers, the collaborators, everybody embraced us and uh, provided the support we needed to overcome this challenge. Here we see our achievements. Currently, we are the biggest uh, tour company. We're currently we're the biggest Brazilian tour company outside Brazil. And uh, this was only possible due to a lot of uh, professionalism, uh, due to our staff as well. They are really good. Uh, and uh, they work really hard. And of course, you are a dear family. Currently also working uh, El Calafate besides Ushuaia. As you can see here in the image, the glacier capital. So there are, we hold, we host Brazilians in Ushuaia and in El Calafate. These images uh, show you a little bit of the city that I, I invite you guys to come and visit. It's really worth it. Uh, to visit to try Calafate in Antarctica. A little after our big, biggest challenge. Please go to the next slide. Thank you so much. After overcoming our biggest challenge, uh, my brother becoming a partner since 2016 helped me a lot. We have been working uh, together. Uh, and uh, recently in 2021, uh, as you can see in the image here, there are four people. So in 2021, we partnered up with two other people. Currently, there are four directors in the company. And uh, that uh, increases our strength. Uh, and our workforce to reach our objectives. I also want to highlight the awards we received in Brazil and abroad for the excellency of our service, for our after sales quality and commitment in the products we offer and towards our clients. It also reflects in the results of us being number of Brazilian company outside Brazil. Altogether, we received uh, six awards. As I mentioned before, the, the latest one was in Qatar. Here you can see our two locals in the city of Ushuaia on the main street downtown, one on the main street downtown, the other one at the airport. And uh, we'll be very, very pleased to host a trip to this paradise here. Next slide, please. Currently, there are 68 employees in our team, and they'll be very happy to receive uh, you with open arms so you can offer all the attractions, city tours that uh, happens in the cities of Ushuaia and El Calafate. Here you see our collaborators, not everybody. And on the next image, Thank you so much. You see our growth. Lately on July 21st, we started the only uh, started the only winter center for Brazilians uh, in the world. We have uh, several tours and excursions. Uh, we have a restaurant, uh, Patagonia Refugee, incredible woods. There are several activities and several beautiful sites uh, to see. Please go to the next images. There are daylight and nighttime uh, tours uh, all along the winter, which lasts approximately three months. 
during summer we are developing products uh developing products for Paco Strong. We are still reaching our goals and uh, briefly we aim to develop other activities for our also park like gift shops, another restaurant, uh, clothing rental equipment. There's much more coming. As a last note, I'd like to thank everyone who is present here at the BIS webinar. Thank Mr. Jesus Moron very much, and also Mr. Daniel Javier very much uh, from World Cup, World Cup, and the whole staff that uh, is working at this event. And uh, also, I'd like to thank all the lecturers here that are sharing this space with us for their time uh, and all these uh, entrepreneurs connected to the hospitality system. Alô? Bom, estou, estou, desculpa. Sabrina said, Aquil, being a keen nature lover, she wants to keep the environment, especially the rainforest, safe and sustainable. Being an environmental activist, she often appears in the media sharing her views on the importance of conserving Mother Earth and saving our, the, the beautiful uh, rainforest. But she's not only a success businesswoman and a passionate environmentalist, she is an example of women power and a surprises box. She's Taekwondo Black Belt Fourth Dan. She's a qualified chef in patisserie and, uh, and she's called uh, a light. She was awarded with the Civil Defense Service Medal. Great woman, an example, and uh, Taina, Tana Aina, is the brainchild of Puan City, Sharifa Sabrin Sayed Akil. Uh, Tana Aina comprises a string of eco resorts, cafe, and restaurants located in Pahang, Jogor, and Selangor. The resorts are nested in the lush tropical rainforest of Malaysia and offer an authentic ecotourism experience and provide visitors an insight of the preservation of the environment. Uh, the natural lover chose the name Tana Aina for her resorts. Uh, as she had the vision to popularize Malaysia's, um, Malaysia's ecotourism to the world through a local brand. Uh, Tana means land in uh, Bahasa language, while Aina is Sharifa's Sabrina's uh, nickname, and her resorts are named after her children and grandchildren. Uh, Sharifa Sabrina, who is president of the Organization of the Protection of Natural Heritage Malaysia, made sure no trees were downed or rocks moved in the river as she closely monitored the construction of her resorts. The resorts have received numerous awards from all over the world and national awards too, and it's a pleasure to receive and to present Sharifa Sabrina Binti Sayed Akil and Tana Aina Resorts. Um, it's an honor to be here to receive this award and um, I feel so happy that uh, Tana Aina uh, Eco Resorts uh, being uh, recognized and I'm very grateful to my staff, especially my staff and I dedicate this award to my staff. Alright, uh, it's the secret is to be hands-on, to work together and always uh, be creative and think outside the box. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My heartfelt gratitude, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you to the World Corp and your wonderful team, Jesus. I'm, and I'm looking forward for to see uh, you all in Kuala Lumpur. And um, for your information, Malaysia, we have the most beautiful, pristine rainforest. And Tanaina has few resorts in the rainforest and I'm the only woman running a resort in the rainforest. <laughs> Whatever it is, no matter how far we are, no matter how developed we are, 
please preserve our mother nature. Tanaina is about preservation and conservation of, of our nature. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. To me, I believe that no matter how far you are, but you must always remember that uh, Mother Nature is always near to your heart because Mother Nature is the lung in your life. Welcome, Serena Safarina, um, CEO and founder of uh, Tana Aina. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And please go ahead. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel, Mr. Daniel, Mr. Yusuf, and uh, all your team. Greetings from Malaysia. Now we're about uh, 10, uh, 10 p.m., <laughs> 10, 15 p.m., yeah. Okay, uh, most important, um, um, as you all know, my name is uh, Sharifa Sabrina. Um, I'm always an uh, avid nature lover, uh, nature lover since young. Always love to go um, trekking and uh, you know uh, going into the forest and all that. And you, you know the, uh, that Malaysia we have the most beautiful rainforest in the world, and it which is the oldest rainfo uh, rainforest. Yeah. So um, I run an eco tourism businesses. Uh, eco resorts, cafe, restaurant, and also durian fruit orchard. If you have heard about durian fruits, it's the king of the fruits. I started out as an uh, initiative to protect forests, but it ended up as a, a resort. So I put open a few resorts in the uh, middle of a uh, forest. Um, you know, we, 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 are, we have very um, the large and pristine rainforest. And Tanaina is, the, is also a retreat, a getaway in the heart of the tropical rainforest, located deep in the lush forest of Pahang, Malaysia. And uh, I would say that there is nothing uh, typical about Tanaina. It stands uh, uniquely beautiful in connection with nature. Everything about Tanaina is about nature. Even the, 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 uh, the, the restaurant that we open also surrounded with nature. So we built, we built those buildings, if you can see, without using heavy machineries and we don't change the original landscape. So each uh, Tana Aina has their own uniqueness. Uh, one of it is that Tana Aina Faras Raya, which has won many awards, is an exclusive forest resort and is only accessible uh, via an off-road path and a short jungle track will lead you to three national waterfalls. And we have a lot of beautiful waterfalls in Malaysia. Um, I'm still working on expanding more Tana Aina in other countries. Hopefully, uh, my dream come true. Tana Aina is built on uh, reinforced foundations that have prove, uh, proven solid enough to withstand wear, tear, and the strong currents from floodwaters. As you know, Malaysia, we have a lot of rain. And um, I have to give the credits yeah, to my staff as they are my backbones. Without them, I can't build Tana Aina. And also for your information, Tana Aina is a hub to create, to create awareness on forests, flora and fauna, and our beautiful rivers. So it is important for people to come and visit the resorts to understand how important our environment, and also how beautiful our rainforest. So along the way, it's already uh, 12 years, yeah, we have built, uh, you know, we, we opened Tan Aina, then there have been many changes and improvements that we have had to make in our many years of business. And we are slowly, but surely perfecting our system. Firstly, we practice sustainability in our resorts. So the products that we use in our resorts are environmentally friendly and do not contribute to the pollution of rivers, etc. 
we also grow our own crops, our own vegetables and so on and serve them for meals to our customers. And um, none of our crops contain pesticides and are grown 100% naturally. We also pride ourselves in the excellence of customer service. We have worked very closely with our staff to make sure they prioritize the comfort and well being of customers. So they are also responsible for the upkeep, upkeep of the resorts and restaurants. So that's why I say they are my backbones. And on top of that, you know, the durian plantation, which we, we, we don't uh, spray any pesticides, it's all um, 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 natural product. And to make sure that we are in tune with the protection of nature, we made sure all Tanaina resorts were built around the nature without removing or destroying any of the natural landscapes, such as trees or large rocks. We don't move any of it. So Tanaina is not just a holiday destination, it is also a learning experience. Customers are fully immersed in the beauty of the nature that surrounds them. We make sure that even though it's in the forest, but the guests and um, our, you know, they are comfortable with the rooms and so on. So Tanaina has also received 19 inter international awards and nine Malaysian awards. Tanaina Eco Resort received recognition in terms of maintaining the eco itself and also dedication and good governance based on operation and reputation. So being awarded as a BIS winner means more than just a trophy. And I really appreciate that. It is a dream that has turned into reality. Building Tanaina from ground up has been a long journey. It's not easy to run a business in the forest. So although it hasn't always been a smooth one, it has definitely been worthwhile. Lots of hard work and dedication has led to this significant moment. I may not have attended university, but as it turned out, Tana Aina is my universe of knowledge and skills. It is uh, amazing how the forest has educated me. I've learned a lot. And the forest has triumphed over social conditioning, leaving me experienced, skilled, and knowledgeable while remaining untamed. So the natural environment contributes greatly to our economy, but sadly, the exploitation of natural resources, uh, resources uh, such as mining and logging have damaged so much of the biodiversity. So we always take our natural environments, you know, so much for granted, thinking that it will always be there. So we forgot how essential it is, not only for our well-being, but for our very survival. So when we think of the natural environment, we don't think about its beauty. But Tana Aina is always about preservation, conservation, and protection. And um, I dare to say, say that um, not many women would take this uh, challenge, you know, to build a resort in the forest because a lot of people think that oh forest there's a lot of animals and all that no not really animals are always scared of human beings and i stand here today as the only woman in malaysia running businesses in the lush forest and i would like to thank you so much to the beast world hop for this opportunity and um, let's all pray May God bless us for saving his creation. Thank you so much. And this is our, our, our restaurant, if you can see. Uh, it's all surrounded with nature and there's a river flowing in between. And um, this is one of the popular restaurants in Pahang, uh, Malaysia. That's great, thanks.
Sharifa, Sabrina, for sharing us with us. Uh, it's, it's clear that uh, hospitality is not just to rent rooms. It's about the experience that you bring into to, to, your, to your guests, right? Exactly. That's wonderful. Well, now uh, yeah. I will invite uh, all our speakers to, to join us. Uh, maybe we have uh, questions to the end, or maybe we can share. Um, so maybe, may, can we join all together, Will? Oh, excellent. Uh, thanks, thanks to all of you for your presentations and for uh, stay with us until the end of the presentation. So at the, uh, the end of the webinar, so we can share this moment. Uh, I have, I have a couple of questions uh, for you. First, uh, Nicolaus and Eva, um, one of your uh, challenges now is to extend the, the tourism uh, season, right? That's something that is vital because you have a lot of costs and taxes and, and it's important to have an, ex an extensive uh, season, right? It's always difficult to do this. Uh, uh, we try uh, the, the land, Greece, we tried this a lot of years. Look, there is a big problems with the transfer, the transfer from other countries, the tourism. For example, uh, if there's not flights to the islands, you cannot uh, make bigger decision. It's, it's, it's uh, cannot be. Uh, how the people, they must come. Uh, you cannot come always via Athens. Uh, this is a big problem. And uh, if, after all, it's very expensive also. Uh, so the, the people, they don't want to pay only for the flight uh, 1,000, 2,000 euros and after uh, to have still the accommodation and the, everything else but still there exists. So I don't know what will be. We, we talked already with the Minister of Tourism the last uh, uh, two months. I just sent him a, a letter two weeks ago and I explained to him all the problems what there is in the islands. So if they can do something like a government, so we can have the opportunity to expand the season to make it all over the years, all over the year. And uh, because the weather actually, for example, in Crete is good in the winter time. We don't have weather under 10 degrees. So uh, we have always about uh, 15 uh, to 25 degrees in the winter time. So why not to be open? Yes, especially because Germans are, are your main uh, guests, right? So it's, yes. it's very cold. Winter is very cold for them. Uh -huh. Winter is very cold, and also all Europe, all the North Europe has problems in the winter time. That's that's great. Okay, uh, Mario, um, a, a question for you. Una pregunta para você. Uh, vocês não só recebem brasileiros, também recebem outras pessoas. Quais são os desafios que vocês têm uh, num país como a Argentina, que além de tudo tem tem uma uma crise na economia, uma crise política. É muito difícil ser um empresário na Uh, em essas condições, não? Sim, uh, na verdade, a Argentina tem enfrentado um momento econômico, político bastante complicado. Hum. É, aqui, aqui na cidade de Ushuaia, é, por ser uma ilha, né, por assim dizer, está tão ao sul do planeta, a gente pode dizer que reflete menos esses problemas econômicos do que reflete o resto do país. E também nos ajuda bastante o fato de uh, termos uma excelente equipe no Brasil. Ou seja, a maior parte das vendas é feita no Brasil e o, o nosso cliente ele, ele já vem é, para Ushuaia com o seu pacote como que definido, né? seu pacote de hotel, excursões. Né? E também vendemos, como né, é muito bem colocado, Vendemos também para muitos argentinos, né? através de plataformas, né? plataformas como a própria Despegar, né? ou no Brasil falamos Decolar, vendemos muito também nessas plataformas e que nos ajudam também a receber pessoas do mundo inteiro. E a nossa agência, por estar muito bem localizada, bem na rua principal também da, da, da cidade, nos pontos, vamos dizer, no coração né? da, 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 da cidade, 
Então, passam pessoas do mundo inteiro. Né? Então, a gente recebe, em qualquer que seja o idioma, por assim dizer, a gente dá um jeito de atender a quem quer que seja. Quando a gente fala realmente de brasileiros, é que 90% acabam sendo brasileiros. E os desafios a gente tem conseguido aí, pós-pandemia, é superá-los, graças a Deus, né? e o bom trabalho de todos, da nossa, da nossa equipe, e também, claro, né, os próprios clientes também que nos ajudam bastante. Obrigado. Uh, now we have a question for Sharifa Sabrina, because you are the, the passionate uh, about environment. It's a, a question from Imanshu Pancholi. He's a director and principal consultant at GKA Consulting. And his questions are, what about water conservation? Uh, what about uh, food waste uh, disposal? All right. In uh, in Tana Aina, yes, we have uh, food, uh, you know, food waste disposal in the sense that we turn it into to become um, to become um, baja. All right. So, yeah. So uh, we tend to burn, uh, you know, to, to make it like a food uh, uh, to 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 use it to re recycle and all that. We have all that in in, in our, our country. So we use some of the uh, food waste to, you know, to, to put back in, uh, to, uh, to use for our plantation and all that. So that, that's great for us, yeah. And the other question is, how do you involve your stakeholders with environmental practices? Okay, um, we have like a, a association, you know, where we help each other. And um, ecotourism in Malaysia is very popular because of the beautiful rainforest that we have. So we tend to um, keep changing ideas and all that. So that's that's no problem. Yeah. But mostly local or, or international tourism? Uh, mostly local, local tourism. Yeah, right. mostly local. Because of the MCO have stopped a lot. So now we are starting back again and we have to build again the the the, the uh, the uh, uh, what is it the the the, uh, the chain and all that you know we had to start uh, starting all over again after this MCO so we are we are doing a lot of uh, preparation and planning. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. And uh, a last you. question. A last question to Eva. Uh, your your area is communications and and. If there is a sector that is under the public scrutiny is uh, uh, hospitality and tourism because you have applications that uh, you, you're you having daily exams about the perception of your clients so it's it's absolutely important i, I personally i never go to a hotel or visit a place without first uh, searching in, in in the applications no? in the usual applications uh information and and reviews about the clients so how important is, is that and how important is communications today and, 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 mass, and, and social media, right? It's uh, so important. It's not only for us. I think it's uh, for all businesses. Uh, the deal with the clients, the guests, uh, depends on the kind of the business which we are. Uh, for sure, the social medias, uh, especially the last years, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all these are very important. As I said before... But, but, but you have a difference with other sectors. The difference is yes. that if I go to booking and I, I can see that your, your qualification is 8.9, for example, and that's something that it doesn't happen in other sectors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, trial. Also, as I mentioned before, our uh, relationship with the tour agencies are so strong. That's why the results of our uh, re revenues, the percent, ninety-seven percent of our revenues come from the tour, uh, the travel agencies, not the online. You, you understand me from two yeah. from other tour operators. So uh, we also operate and we stay uh, to operate in a traditional way. Even uh, the things have changed and uh, um, most of the businesses go to a more uh, technological and social media re revolution. Uh, it's something for sure that we must follow and be up to date also. And uh, we work for it, for the communication, for the social media. We have a, a good result for it, as you have seen also from booking from Expedia. 
uh, because we have um, internal procedures that uh, we take place in order to make our guests be happy and satisfied before they are uh, coming to the hotel, during their stay, and also after their stay, because it's a procedure that is not only during their stay, the services we provide and all the uh, um, the service and uh, the communication with the guests, it's a whole procedure which has three levels, before they come, during, and then after it. And I think we have managed to do it very well. That's great. Well, thank you. And, and thank you very much to all of, to all of you. We have uh, a tour from the, the, the lush uh, uh, tropical forest in Malaysia to, to the Mediterranean paradise and, and then to the snow in the, in the south of Argentina. So it was wonderful. And I want to thank for you. you. You were great speakers and you shared your expertise and, and you speak about the, the resilience, it's about the success. And, and your uh, members of the World Confederation of Businesses, we are very proud of you. So thank you very much. And, uh, and please, if you want to give us uh, your, your final words, it will, uh, it will be a pleasure. Nicolas, maybe you want to start. It was a big pleasure for me to see all of you here. It's uh, first of all, I want to come to visit Usaya, Us Usaya, uh, because my plan is anyway to for my next uh, trip to go to Latin America. So I think I will come to uh, to Mario to see him, and uh, later on uh, another trip to Sabrina. And uh, everybody go on to be successful, to believe in himself. Thank, Thank you. you. Mario? É, sim, também queria agradecer muito, né? Foi uh, um, um grande privilégio poder participar, né? Junto também empresários de sucesso, né? E, sem dúvida, também conhecer um pouquinho né, da, da história, da trajetória e também da, da, das lindas instalações que cada um deles tem. Né? E agradecer a vocês também, né, Daniel, Jesus, agradecer toda a equipe. Né? Sem dúvida, a gente ficou muito honrado né, pelo convite em participar e, sem dúvida, vamos estar com vocês é, outras ocasiões, né? porque é uma empresa muito séria, é uma empresa muito responsável, né? E, sem dúvida, está buscando sempre uh, os empresários de sucesso. Né? Então, é para nós um grande privilégio poder estar nessa lista né, nobre de vocês como empresário de sucesso. Então, muito obrigado a todos e sem poder também nunca nos esquecer da nossa equipe, nossos colaboradores e nossos familiares também. Obrigado. Thanks, Mario. Thank you very much. Eva, thanks for, for joining us. Thank you. I would like to uh, give congratulations to both of the rest awarded uh, uh, businesses. Congratulations to Mr. Mario for his professionalism, for the commitment to his clients, for those uh, uh, natural gems that offer to us and have the chance to visit. And also thank Mrs. Uh, Sarifa and congratulations for his uh, uh, protection for the diversity, the conservation and the reservation of uh, our mother nature. Thank you, Eva. And, and I agree completely with Eva. Thank you very much, uh, Sharifa, Sabrina, for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure and to, to know all of you here. Uh, it's, I, I, I consider that I have to learn more, especially from you all. And um, it's a, Malaysia is a must visit country. We are full of different races, lush green and delicious food, uh, different kind of cultures, beautiful women, uh, beautiful people, <laughs> of course, beautiful women too, <laughs> beautiful people. And um, yes, <laughs> we keep in touch and I'll see you again. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for being speakers today for joining uh, this this webinar and, and share your experiences with uh, our viewers. Thanks to our viewers for joining us and thanks to the World Cups team for this uh, amazing webinar. Uh, thanks. I uh, hope to see you soon 
Uh, see you very soon. Bye-bye.